Greetings, everyone. I welcome you all to the session uh, of hashtag Meet the Experts. Learn the law from the people who are in the who are in the field and learn from their experience. It's been long said, and it's been a wise person said that the la the greatest invention of anyone's of uh, humankind is the maps because they help us to go from one direction to another direction. In this season, in the season today, we have with us Miss Shristi Murari, who is Assistant Vice President, Genpak. Uh, I now, and she will be speaking on the topic. Uh, meeting the, uh, in in the series, she will be speaking on the topic of role of in-house counsels in legal profession, or how someone can be a legal profession as a legal. Uh, so before that. I introduce to all of you uh, to to give a welcome speech, a welcome note. We have with us Dr. Azim Khan Pathan sir, who is professor and HOD, head of department, School of Law, GD Goenka University. Sir Azim Khan sir has a 16 years of academic experience and professional uh, of professional experience. He has served as dean and in charge of School of Law of different law schools, prestigious law schools, which includes G, uh, Gilgodia University. And you and other universities like uh, other universities like UP. He has also been resource persons as various workshops, including UGC Resource Development Center at Indo. Sir has a credit of project on ethanol based blending a way forward, conducting his policy and research chambers in New Delhi. He has also a third two books and numerous research paper and articles and journal of repute. He's also the reviewer of International Journal of Human Rights. And he has also been recipient of ex-Prime Minister, uh, ex -Prime Minister P. V. Nasima Rao gold medal. It is also to update all of you uh, that our uh, Dean, Dr., uh, Professor Dr. Tabrez Ahmed, he is not there in this session uh, because he has to go for an urgent meeting because he's also the vice chancellor of our university. So, but he has uh, wish everyone all the good wishes for this session. And he has sent uh, good wishes to Shishti Ma'am, who is also our resident. Sir. Uh, Shishti Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sreyash. Uh, indeed, I welcome to our uh, today's guest speaker, Ms. Shishti Murari, for this uh, uh, specially uh, the talk and the meet the industry expert and especially in the caption or under the caption of career as a in-house counsel in India. Indeed, uh, I welcome to uh, Ms. Rishti in this particular session. And I also extend heartfelt gratitude on behalf of entire uh, uh, GD Goenka University and School of Law and on behalf of our Honorable Vice Chancellor and, and our Dean of School of Law uh, Professor Dr. Tabrez Ahmed. I also extend uh, heartfelt gratitude and uh, welcome here for this session to Ms. Srishti, uh, uh, especially on behalf of all faculty members of School of Law, uh, our admission team, uh, Mr. Tushar, uh, Mr. Ishan, <clears throat> and other, you know, uh, the members of admission team and our, you know, entire School of Law. Uh, indeed, I also extend uh, heartfelt uh, gratitude and warm regard to all participants, especially law aspirants. And besides that, our different participants gathered from different corners of the country, including our own students. And besides that, our own faculty members who have joined today here for this you know, uh, special talk uh, in this entire series of expert talk series. Uh, let me give you a, a small brief about the School of Law. <clears throat> the School of Law indeed uh, uh, started its important, you know, the program offering and offerance in 2013, including undergraduate program in BA LLB, BBA LLB areas, then become LLB, and besides that, LLB three-year programs, and then Master of Law program as well. Uh, besides that, we have at our law school, LLM program uh, that is in six different special specializations, which is more based on market demand, including arbitration and conciliation area. Besides that, 
uh, uh, more specifically corporate law area, criminal law area, constitutional law area, international trade law area. And besides that, you know, cyber law and information uh, and IPR issues. Uh, uh, in these different six specializations we are offering, you know, LLM program. Besides that, undergraduate program, we have also introduced, you know, 14 specialization and dual specializations, more specifically in five years integrated program and three years, uh, you know, uh, law degree as well. Uh, the specialty of School of Law, indeed, uh, the first time in this entire country, we are offering dual specializations where students, they can also go and grow in one more specialization like corporate law or he or she can choose besides corporate law, IPR or other important you know, area related to the market demand. So that in that way, this choice-based credit system we have you know, incorporated and we have introduced. We have also besides this uh, different area chairs, like we have in our law school, 10 area chairs, including cyber law chair, taxation law chairs, international arbitration law chairs, Besides that, constitutional law chairs, uh, then, you know, IPR related chairs. So including these all, you know, 10 chairs we have and those, you know, all program chairs, indeed, they support in curriculum building, best experiences of, you know, uh, the students, different workshops, uh, organizations, different skill-based, contract drafting based, you know, different important programs, which are integral part of, you know, skill, uh, for development of skills of the students. So in that way, you know, we have introduced uh, totally and we uh, totally a new important areas uh, along with, you know, uh, this clinical legal education. So that is one of the important focal area of GD Goenka Law Schools. Uh, besides that, uh, let me also, you know, uh, prize at this juncture, you know, we have a unique moot court uh, uh, after Supreme Court of India, almost all from first Chief Justice of India to current Chief Justice of India, we have all portrait and, you know, uh, uh, already, you know, established in our moot court, uh, which is one of the important, you know, laboratory we, we can consider for the students where argue, where, where they prepare their all, you know, important memorials. So in that way, we are also trying to inculcate you know, a totally uh, uh, important nuances among the student and for their enhancements of, uh, you know, entire skills, which is required for the advocacy. Uh, as far as concerning to these all important lecture series, the purpose of these all important lecture series is ultimately to provide, you know, important, you know, avenues and, you know, platforms for the students to, uh, 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 for them, uh, uh, to understand what exactly is, you know, uh, important ways forward in, you know, legal domain or in this legal field. So uh, we are so much fortunate, uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Srishti today, we, who ha uh, you have joined today, this particular, you know, talk, special talk. Indeed, uh, uh, we are thankful to you uh, taking out time from your busy schedule. You have come here virtually and joined this particular, you know, session. So thank you so much for joining. And once again, I welcome you on behalf of entire School of Law. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, sir, for your enlightenment. Uh, now, let me introduce to our resource persons, Ms. Shrishti Murari. She is presently the Assistant Vice President, GenPAC. Ma'am has a distinguished career. She has a season. She has been an alumni of prestigious universities like Usman University, from where she has done her graduation and law degree. Ma'am has a background of 20 years of experience in law and technology, manufacturing industries, and comprehensive legal and compliance experience in law, technology, healthcare, government relations, and she and various other organizations. She has been a prior experience in leading organizations like DGM Legal, Continuum, Value Labs, and so these are the expert areas. Ma'am is currently heading the legal relations in GenPAC, and she has also been awarded with awards and recognitions like recognition for successful implementation of statutory compliance practice 2007, Women's Achievement Award 2011, Best Team Management 2016, and recently recognition for response to change in employment policies and business 
contingency plans during COVID-19 situation. I welcome you, ma'am, to this session, and I hope all our students will be enlightened from your knowledge, and they will be able to learn something from your vast experience of today. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Shreyas, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Azim Khan, for uh, giving us a brief, and Shreyas, for your introduction. Uh, just a small correction I wanted to make is I lead the employee relations function for GenPAC today. Um, my overall experience is 20 years where I have spent uh, wearing different hats in different uh, uh, different areas within legal. Within legal, we have uh, legal counsel roles, we have compliance roles, we have risk um, auditors. Uh, currently, I lead the employee relations where we handle a lot of employment related uh, changes that the uh, country is going through today and how this is going to impact organizations, what we need to do to keep ourselves up to date on uh, the various situations that we come across today. So um, it's pretty interesting. And um, my 20 years has been a roller coaster ride for me because, um, you know, unfortunately, I have not been a very lucky uh, group of people like you who had experts come in and uh, tell you about what a legal counsel role is all about, what you should expect, how, what you should learn. Uh, so it's, it's been a, you know, ups and downs that we have all gone through. And uh, I also wanted to, you know, just spend like a couple of minutes to tell you how I have seen uh, the legal structure change or the way the legal functions role has changed over the years. Um, you know, from when I started, I literally started somewhere in 2000 and today we are in 22. So it's been uh, quite a drastic change from where I started and what I see today that's happening from a legal uh, counsel perspective expectations from a legal function today. Uh, when we started, it was a very simple, clean and clear job where you know, we review contracts, we give advices, we give opinions. Uh, you know, we are basically departments who people approach when there are, you know, when then they feel that there is going to be a risk or there is going to be a litigation, etc. In fact, I also remember a very uh, interesting encounter with certain people uh, who did not understand what a legal counsel is in a company. For them, a lawyer is someone who is basically going to a court and, you know, fighting cases. Uh, that's what people would typically think at my time. Uh, of course, now things have changed a lot. So uh, today, I feel that, you know, the, uh, the generation is more aware. Uh, the people are more aware. The technology has, uh, ha is running faster than how our laws are incorporating that technology. Uh, and the legal counsel's role is now basically to run at that same speed as how the uh, trends are changing from a technology perspective, from the expectation perspective, and the whole, um, you know, the whole, uh, uh, the way the whole society is today walking towards changing in every aspect of the life, whether it is organizations or whether it is uh, individuals in their own uh, spaces like small uh, corporate companies or small startup organizations who are trying to bring in changes, how law is impacting these changes has become very critical. And legal counsel's role is no more a role of a simple individual trying to give an opinion about a topic. It is today a person who plays a strategic role in an organization's uh, building and growth. So today, uh, this is a department that plays the role of a conscience of the company. We are the people who basically try to, uh, you know, uh, keep the organization at the right position uh, at various junctures in as they take risks, as they move into, you know, uh, higher levels of uh, product development, service offerings, uh, venturing into new fields, etc. So, you know, things have changed drastically. Expectations have changed drastically. Uh, what I have tried to do or what I will try to do in this session, and please uh, do stop me uh, if I'm going way too fast for you or if I'm going way too slow. So please do let me know about it. 
Uh, I have basically divided this discussion or the session into three categories. One is what a typical legal function does today in various organizations. Uh, what I'm sharing with you are my experiences that I have worked in various companies. Uh, once I have described about what the various functions are, and we will talk a little bit about the skill sets that are required or a typical expectation today uh, organizations have uh, from a legal counsel or from a legal officer or a legal assistant, whatever that role could be. And then we will probably uh, get into understanding, you know, <clears throat> what you could do today to, you know, bring in uh, or develop those uh, areas of expertise and develop those skills uh, in your time today. So uh, starting with what a typical legal function or today, uh, what a legal function does or what typically legal uh, professions can do, right? Um, uh, different organizations have different structures. They don't have, I, I, I will not be able to explain a very uh, specific structure or a role or what organizations would have with regards to legal officers, but someone with a legal expertise is a person or someone with a legal knowledge or someone with a legal degree uh, is someone who is expected to or may have uh, or may put into uh, areas of uh, you know functions like government affairs, uh, regulatory affairs, because government affairs and regulatory affairs are very, very, uh, you know, they 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 have they have a very very uh, strict method of operations. They have a specific guidelines, procedures, etc. People need to be up to the mark about their area. So depending upon which uh, company field that company is in, it is very important for you to have knowledge about what kind of regulatory expertise that you need what kind of regulations that market would have uh, like for example when i was working for a manufacturing company uh, it was very important for me and you know uh, uh, someone coming from an it world uh, knowing environmental laws was a little bit of a to spend those extra hours uh, during my work schedule to understand all of it and you know get yourself upskilled into that uh, knowledge because it, it is important uh, as part of explain today that there are several courses uh, that GD Goenka University is offering which is basically uh, keeping up with the trends today and I would really like you to please spend that time and I really appreciate that university like GD Goenka is providing these uh, specializations uh, for you to get yourself uh, upskilled in those topics. And that's very, very key, uh, important area. Uh, nobody would want a legal counsel not to have information. Everybody expects you to know things. And that's why it's important for you to understand that. Apart from regulatory and government affairs, uh, legal expertise or legal people very easily uh, get into areas like corporate uh, compliances, uh, statutory compliance roles. Uh, governance today has become the topmost priority of every organization. Uh, it is the key to any activity that the company does today. Uh, knowing about corporate laws I understand that your university is providing one of those uh, specialization courses. So it is important for you to know the corporate laws of uh, in general, because these, uh, these laws actually help you understand how a company is structured, what a company has to do at various stages in their uh, general statutory requirements in order for them to operate in a particular uh, state, in a particular country, in a particular region, etc. Because every state, region, country has a different law or a requirement. Knowing corporate laws help you gauge that understanding or at least have that understanding. So corporate laws 
statutory compliances are very very critical very very important uh, governance is something which is up to the uh, up, up at every organization's uh, you know uh, issues or risks that they need to control and they need to know about uh, you know people with high experts also participate in board of director meetings where these where you have organizations which are listed companies they have very regular board meetings that are scheduled and statutory compliances corporate compliances uh, uh, lay one of the most critical topics that are discussed at these levels and hence it is important uh, to have knowledge into that area also if you want to uh, you know move into any of these topics and it, it interests you uh, enterprise risk and crisis management now enterprise risk is a little different from uh, corporate compliance or a statutory compliance enterprise risks are while they do cover uh, compliances with regards to statutes and regulations, enterprise risk also takes into consideration the risks that the organizations would have with regards to their uh, engagements with various clients, customers, uh, product organizations, etc. Uh, these are departments that actually get into a little wider range beyond statutory compliances and move into other areas where we where organizations may have agreed on certain um, certain uh, you know uh, certain kind of agreements or arrangements that require them to have a check on a very regular basis so these are uh, people who get into enterprise risks they have internal risks that they basically validate they basically conduct audits on internal risks uh, understanding what the organization is doing today where are the policies what are the procedures uh, you know how how are we dealing with it do we have the right methodology are we conducting the right audits etc so this is the enterprise risk management team which does all of this exercise and um, they are people who have who are expected to have a legal background uh, and there are various certifications available for this as well uh, so this is one of the areas where legal experts uh, get into or have a role to play. Uh, audits is something which is already, which I, I think I've covered in various other topics. Audit in itself is a very large exercise. Audits are uh, conducted at various levels uh, at, by various uh, organizations. There are audit companies themselves that are available who conduct that for the companies. There are internal audits, there are external audits, etc. Legal persons play an important role in these areas as well, because when audits are conducted, they are mostly conducted or there will be uh, areas of regulations, areas of statutory compliances, areas of statutes or current trends, expectations that will be looked into in these audits. And legal experts play a very crucial role because it is their interpretation and their commentaries with regards to these areas that will uh, either make the audit successful or unsuccessful. So they play a very important role uh, in audits as well. Uh, other, other than audits, we have um, uh, information security and data privacy uh, areas as well. Um, while there are people who are uh, specific experts in information security field, because information security as a topic itself has a lot of technology uh, driven expertise, uh, technology driven solutions that are required. So there will be a lot of people from technology background. Legal people play a very crucial role in this department as well, because then we have a lot of information security and data privacy laws that are there today. Uh, I do know that I, GD Goenka University has a specific uh, specialization courses in cyber laws, etc. Cyber attacks are very, very common across the world today. A lot of organizations do face very regular challenges on how to ensure they protect data 
uh, employees, uh, you know, they basically do a lot of time spent in educating employees. At the same time, we are spending a lot of money on technology. And while we do all of this, the role of a legal person becomes even more crucial because when certain aspects like these occur, then it is it is a protection under the law that any organization would like to seek or would like to understand where I stand from a regulatory perspective, you know, what are my risks, what are my losses, where do I get support from, how do I go about it, who should I file a litigation against, etc. So while sometimes we play a post facto role, but we also play a proactive active role at times in information security area where we provide a proactive uh, reasoning on various areas, giving guidances on various procedures to control uh, any exposures that organizations could have with regards to this. So information security and data privacy today is, is one of the hot topics across all organizations. Uh, and that is one of the areas where people look for experts in and would always like to have someone who has a good knowledge on that area. Uh, other than that, CSR has now become uh, another, like uh, up after governance, CSR is now the most, um, you know, most, uh, one of the top, I believe, uh, areas where legal experts are required. Of course, CSR is not only regulated under your company's act, but then, uh, you know, as a legal counsel, we also play a role in, uh, like I said at the beginning of the session, we are the conscience of the organization. So we are telling the organization what is right and what is wrong, right, at the right time. And CSR is one of those areas where we have to keep educating our organization on areas where they can get into, what they cannot do, what, how are the funds going, whether the funds are in the right direction, whether the audits are happening or not happening, guiding the teams into various activities that they try to engage in and how we should be protecting them when they enter into those specific areas uh, under CSR. CSR is not only one of the topmost uh, you know, areas that organizations today concentrate on, but it is also one of the most sensitive areas uh, it is not. Uh, it is not as easy as black and white. It is. It is one of the gray areas where uh, being empathetic and being sensitive towards the situation is very important. And as a legal counsel, that is one of the skills you need to also develop when you get into areas of CSR or when you are uh, engaging with organizations where you want to support. Um, uh, you know, where you want to support any kind of, you know, CSR activities, whether in a company or whether for government or whether in a private sector, etc. Uh, having empathy and sensitivity towards topics is very, very critical today. It is not like the way we used to do earlier, that this is right and this is wrong. You follow what you want to do. That's not how it works today. So keep these uh, basics in mind, CSR is another area uh, that organizations look for. Uh, other than this, you know, uh, there are, you have your, uh, you know, generic uh, areas uh, where legal experts or legal counsels play a role, like in uh, contracts, drafting, negotiating, reviewing, uh, uh, you know, um, and it is not simply like, you know, I get a template from somewhere and I uh, work on a template. Uh, you have to also have the knowledge and skill to create one. Uh, because today, the way organizations are running, uh, literally, it's a marathon. Uh, and it's a long way to go. And today, the expectation the organizations have is uh, not for someone to just take a template and try to improvise it. They look for someone who can create something new and not just creating something new, but also making it simpler. We are no more living in a world where we can make 100 pages of contracts. Um, uh, we are moving away from that. Most of the companies are now moving away from creating 100 page contracts. 
we are now moving into contracts which can be one page two page three pages maximum right it's important you understand the critical parts that are needed in any business exercise how you create it how you negotiate it how you bring it on the table how you convince the other party uh, these are skills that you need to have and develop on uh, contract negotiations transaction lawyers are uh, important lawyers uh, they they are people who basically help bring businesses for the organizations help uh, you know bringing businesses on a faster basis for the companies so we are no more people who are playing a playing a role uh, at the backdrop we are actually front ending a lot of these discussions and hence uh, you need to uh, not uh, just say ki you know i'll download this temple template from google and use it uh, it will not work that way uh, you have to know uh what that service is all about and what that product is all about or what that particular exercise is all about and only then create the right document so uh these are some of the business functions areas where legal counsels play a role uh legal counsels are uh basically now getting involved in also uh fields of uh investments uh, uh taxations uh, is another area where i understand that uh, legal expertise is required uh, with, with the latest changes in gst laws that we have uh, which is already a very very complicated uh, uh, process for a lot of people uh, you know their knowledge and expertise is now becoming critical and it's now coming to a stage where they come in at the front end in the first itself it's not coming ki Uh, i paid the taxes and then i'm thinking ki okay now let me get a legal counsel to see what is happening uh, now it is happening before that it's a proactive step so i think transaction laws um uh, uh taxation laws i understand that uh, gd goenka university has uh, certain upgraded courses on taxation as well on the gst field as well uh, which is very important today uh, very crucial to know and uh, uh, just jumping into from from what i have explained to you on various functions and various fields that legal experts get into uh, the skill sets that are required and you know every after every topic i know i have been telling you that it's important to know the knowledge it's important to develop that skill because uh, if you don't have the knowledge or the skill set uh, a lot of people feel that i can get into general legal uh, field so uh, in fact there was someone who asked me a general counsel uh, means someone who is in general you know giving a generic view or giving a basic understanding of law that's not what a general counsel does a general counsel is basically the chief legal officer of an organization and that person uh, is an expert in in certain fields uh, is knowledgeable in certain areas and these are people who are not just knowledgeable in the topics of law these are people who have leadership skills these are people who have spent a lot of time developing their leadership skills understanding uh, the business operations please uh, keep this point very much in your mind um in my in my um, 20 years of experience one of the uh, problematic areas that i have seen a lot of times when we speak to legal counsels or when we generally have an understanding calls etc uh it is very difficult to have a conversation with anybody within or outside the organization if you do not know the business please know the business please get into the operations know how they are working what they are working what are the areas they get into what they can get into what is the pricing what are the commercials right what is the uh, what is the strength that they will what is the strength of the uh, organization uh, how many different lines of businesses they have within this how many lines of businesses have 
multifaceted uh, uh, SaaS operations, which is a service a software as a service operations. How many are giving only um, you know uh, call center operations? How many are giving product development? What is product development? What is that product all about? Do I know the product? Can I understand the product? Spend time. It is not the I'm telling you the truth. Nobody is going to spend time on you explaining this. It is you who needs to spend that time. You have to get into that business and understand what that business is all about. It is only then you can use your knowledge and skill to utilize the legal expertise that you have. If you don't know the business, there is no way you can achieve it. So one of the skill sets you need is you need to know the business, get into the operation understand it fully and clearly apart from that you should have leadership skills uh, please do not feel that uh, because i know the law it is fine i don't need to develop my other skills that's not how it is working today uh, you know the law wonderful but can you participate in strategic discussions can you get into developmental discussions can you uh, do basic conversations with employees uh, on, you know, even even during COVID, like, um, you know, Shreyas was talking about how we had worked towards the whole uh, pandemic situation. In a pandemic situation, we were not wearing legal hats. Nobody, none of us were wearing legal hats. We were wearing basically an empathy hat. We were wearing sensitivity hat. We were trying to see what I could do best in that scenario, right? And that's where your skills come in. That's where your understanding of law comes in, where you are able to balance the equation between what is required and what I can do. Uh, the appetite of a risk of every organization is at a certain level. It is legal counsels who actually guide these organizations as to what level of risk that you can push yourself into. So please learn your leadership skills. Please be empathetic and sensitive at, at all means. Develop your communication and understanding of businesses and also <clears throat> become technology savvy. Uh, <clears throat> I know, I mean, um, I mean, I had a, uh, I had a really tough time uh, trying to understand uh, basic things like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, etc. Um, but then, you know, these are need of the hour. Uh, as a legal counsel today, uh, we ourselves are getting into the fields of technology development. Uh, we have a lot of uh, people in the market who are legal counsels, legal experts who have now got into the field of developing technology for legal fields. Uh, for, you know, for statutory compliances, you have technology available for uh contract management you have technology available for case management we have uh, any kind of litigation cases any kind of employment related cases etc a basic case management tracker uh, tool is available today for the organizations lawyers need to be technology savvy you should know what technology is available and you should understand how that technology can be utilized within your organization, within your function, within your own activities, how best it can be utilized. Uh, we also today uh, do a lot of data analytics work. Uh, you know, there were times when people used to tell me that I'm a lawyer, I will only do contracts, I can't work on Excel sheets. You know, these are very simple, basic statements we keep hearing. I'm a lawyer. Yeah, why should I work on Excel sheets? Why am I supposed to do PPTs? But the point is that we are no more those basic lawyers. We, we have now moved on. Uh, we, have, we are now the repositories of a lot of data that organizations hold. We, we are the repositories of that. Uh, we have a lot of data with us where we can conduct data analytics to understand uh, the trend of the organization today, where the organization is moving, how far we are, what we need to do today to make changes within our organization. And this data analytic is very regularly utilized um, within the organization because big data is one of the most important uh, uh, area where people can be 
uh, can uh, move ahead of others, right? So your data has to be crucial and very important for you. And legal team today is spending time. Uh, legal teams are spending time, money, um, you know, uh, getting technology, learning the technology, implementing technologies, developing technologies. Uh, blockchain is one of the most complicated technology uh, that is there. It is actually uh, works wonders if it is implemented in the right manner. Uh, but then, you know, uh, it has its own pros and cons and you know you can read a lot about blockchain on google there is a lot of information available and within the tools that legal team has today blockchain is one of the methodologies used and knowing about it is very important so please be technology savvy please work on your leadership skills please always be empathetic and sensitive towards every situation and be a creative thinker know what your business is all about know the operations without knowing your business and operations you cannot play a role at all so these are some of the skills you need there are these are some of the areas that you know today legal counsels play a role in and uh, <clears throat> there will be times where um, you know we will uh, we will have to pay pay uh, play the role of a uh, cop like a cop we have to tell them what is right and what is wrong and uh, uh, you know we have to tell people when you have to stop certain activities that's a very thin line we walk on um, but make sure that you do inform people at the right time your communication has to be crystal clear where it is no it is a no where it is a way of doing it we explain the way of doing it uh, always partner with your businesses always partner with your customers and clients understand them well uh, but at the same time when it is required to say a no and be clear that this is not something that we would recommend please be very clear on that path as well uh, so communication has to be very crystal clear on how you do it uh, always saying a no also makes it like, you know, we are the bottlenecks of the company, which is not the truth. So engage yourselves into the business and, uh, you know, bring the right uh, coordination between the law uh, and the business so that, you know, we all work uh, in a much better uh, way. So that that's what I had a little snippet uh, of my experience on law and what we need to do today. What are the basic expectations? I hope I was uh, informative enough for all of you. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, anything I could help with. Indeed, ma'am, it was a very enlightening session for everyone, even for our faculties as well. Uh, now the session is open for the Q&A. Everyone is having any questions, they can directly put it, open their mic and they can ask you, ma'am. Anyone? Okay, ma'am, I think I got a few questions on my chat box. So I'll read it out one by one for you. Uh, Ma'am, the first question is, uh, what experience or training has prepared you for this role? What experience and training? Uh, what experience uh, or training has prepared this, uh, has prepared you uh, for this position in which I believe presently you're working on? That's right. So the current role that I have is basically uh, on, again, deals a lot with labor laws. And my experience in labor laws has been quite extensive. Uh, throughout my career, I have spent a lot of time in participating in collective bargaining agreements, uh, working on various employee related issues, concerns, litigations, etc. Uh, and that's how uh, I came into this role of employee relations. Uh, 
uh, employee relations as a uh, you know it's very similar to how manufacturing sectors have labor relation officer similarly now it and its companies are spending time in uh, creating uh, something called employee relations uh, where they are the basically people who bridge which are they are basically the bridge between the employee and the employer uh, that's the role we uh, typically play an employee relations person plays in any organization ma'am the second question is uh, have a uh, company secretary is an important for this role as in i believe they want to ask that whether company secretary is a qualification is important yes absolutely so the statutory compliances labor compliances and corporate laws that i have referred to uh a lot of these organizations require people who have company secretarial background uh, uh you know because this is a specialized area uh it's a very very complicated process of understanding and structure of the organizations how the structure has to be uh what are the various compliances within the under the companies act that organizations need to follow so yes a company secretarial role is very critical and it is one of the uh one of the uh qualifications that people will look for okay ma'am there are few questions but i just want to club it and ask in a two phase manner uh the qu first question the first said they are asking that what are the challenges uh, you uh, as an in house counsel face and especially during the time of pandemic i think that's that's okay. see challenge as an in house counsel we always face is like the last bit that i was talking about where you know saying no becomes very difficult uh, telling people that you know uh telling uh, your customers your clients uh, if you are an individual lawyer or an independent lawyer uh telling no to your clients about certain things or saying that no this is not how we can work it out uh is very difficult because their expectation is always that you know uh if I, if this is the business need or this is my requirement why can't you do it this way so it's important uh for us to uh you know have a uh, basically be very methodolic methodological and uh, like i kept keep saying all the time know the business understand what your client or customer is operating on uh, and explain them not only with a problem but give them a solution as well uh, i would always recommend that when you tell them no to a certain thing or when we say that no this is not what we can do then provide them a solution also don't simply uh, keep, um, end a particular matter there uh, we have a lot of times faced this problem as a legal counsel i have myself faced a lot of times where we have put off put down on certain aspects uh, where we do receive push back but then that's our job and that is a risky area uh, but then that's the work we need to do we need we, like i said we are the conscience of the company so it's important for us to be clear on what can be done and what cannot be done during pandemic uh, it was the most horrific experience uh, anyone had i'm 100% sure all of us have gone through a huge change in the way today we see uh, different things today how we see society um, it was very very complex very very com uh, you know different difficult you know uh, we were waiting for notifications from governments to come in what the government will say what the government will not say can we take vaccination we can't take vaccination can we ask can we not ask what do we do so there are multiple things that we have to as an organization concentrate on uh, ultimately of course uh, you know the worst situation was you know when people were going through a lot of difficult times within their families businesses also get impacted a lot because people could not report to work because of the lockdown so that was a big issue uh, but then you know we all had to work together as an organization and like i said be empathetic and sensitive about the situation you can't always uh, think uh, black and white uh, there will be certain gray areas and we need to you know think what is the best for an individual in those circumstances always especially in pandemic situations so we as an organization also all of them all companies have worked extra hard to make sure that they have made all the employees 
uh, their priority uh, during pandemic. And that's what all companies have done. ंग thank you so much uh, everyone for joining in i first of all i just want to propose a vote of thanks uh, to our vc and managing director and pro vice chancellor mr nipun goenka who has given us an opportunity to work and let ma'am share his exp her experience on this point uh, then we want to thank our honorable vice chancellor sir and also dean school of law Dr. professor dr tabrez ahmed sir for giving us this opportunity and this area to work and to although he's uh, Right. So all these things, we just want to say thank you so much for being part. Now, thank. Want to thank Professor Azim Khan sir for being giving us a starting point from where we could take our talks. Then I would like to thank Ma'am for taking out time from her busy schedule and coming down and giving and sharing her experience because I believe uh, it's, it's been said that it's good to learn from experiences from other people who have what all work they have done so that you can go and. go to the next level and let the learn other people learn from your experience so it's just sharing or bearing a thought thought bearer from one point to another i want to thank all the participants and all the students and all the faculty who all from within the university outside the university who has joined our so many questions uh, because of the paucity of the time we could not take some many more questions but i i'm sure that uh, there will be many more questions Uh, if you want to ask any questions to us you can just shout or you can ask a question to ma'am and i would like to thank all the it support all the people who have been who have been part of this webinar session i hope all of you must have learned something that is from my side thank you so much everyone for being thank you so much thank you thank, thank you, you thank, thank you so much thank you so much drishti uh, uh, for taking out time and you know coming here and we will definitely host you you know physically as well in campus soon <laughs> sure sir my pleasure any time thank you so much thank you uh, for this wonderful time i hope i was able to be helpful to the team and uh, look forward to more sessions thank you so much thank you so much